Here is a question. There are two salesmen and both of them have the exact same marketing skills. There is a crowd of hungry people and both salesmen are tasked with selling them food. One of them is selling bread. The other one is selling goat penises. Which one will have an easier time selling their product? The answer is quite obvious. Now let's say the salesman selling goat penises is way more skilled. Who will sell more of their stock now? The answer is still the same because bread is objectively better than goat penises. So today we are going to talk about the most important marketing decision you can make in your entire indie dev career. Choice of genre. Regardless of how good your game is, there are certain genres that will give you a starting advantage. But before we continue, I would like to inform you that I am not pulling this information out of my ass. My research data comes from three sources. Steam Spy, Tang and Genre Popularity Data, Chris Zukovsky's research, Chris happens to be a marketing expert when it comes to selling on Steam, link to his video in the description, and last but not least, my own experience of releasing three different games that happen to be three different genres. The focus of this video is going to be genres of games that sell best on Steam and also other platforms. But I also want to emphasize that if your dream game does not fall into any of these genres, you should still make the game. I am personally against the idea of sacrificing my creative vision for the sake of marketing. However, there are ways you can combine your genre with other genres to make it work. And we will talk about that in this video too. So let's begin with the most common genre among indie devs. 2D retro inspired platformers. Is it bread or is it goat penises? The answer is goat penises. Next, we have RPG action adventure, which is the genre of game I make. Is it bread or is it goat penises? The answer is bread. What about roguelike deck builders? Is it bread or is it goat penises? The answer is pizza. That's right, there's a third category. Pizza is bread with cheese and topping on it, which means that it will sell even better than bread. What I'm trying to teach you here is supply and demand. Certain genres are in higher demand than others, and 2D platformers are not one of them. 2D platformers are also too easy to make. In fact, they are usually the first game an amateur indie dev makes, and because of that, there is a high supply of it. What happens when the supply is high and demand is low? Well, competition becomes higher and selling becomes harder. RPG games, on the other hand, have a higher demand and also higher supply, which means that there is competition but it's also much easier to succeed in this market. Roguelike deck builders, on the other hand, is in high demand and low supply, or at least it was when Hand of Fate came out. Since then, we have had an increase in supply. But I still believe that this genre has a higher success chance compared to the other two I mentioned. There are also genres that fall into the very high demand and very low supply category. They are a bit hard to know about, but I would guess that strategy and certain types of simulation and city builders fall into these categories. Basically, any genre of game that is difficult to make falls into the lower supply category, but you have to also make sure that the demand for it is also high. Just because something is hard to deliver doesn't mean people want it, and that is what we need to identify. Now, let's have a look at some other genres. Sports. I have never played a sports game in my entire life, so I'm not going to say anything about it. But I would guess that sports is in low demand but lower in supply. Metrovania, on the other hand, is very similar to RPG. Remember in the start of the video when I said that there are ways you can combine your genre with other genres to make it work? Well, if you are making a platformer, you could try and turn it into a metrovania and market it as one. Puzzle games, low in demand, medium in supply. You would probably do better in this market compared to platformer markets, but I would still not recommend it. When you select certain genres, you will also have certain marketing advantages that other genres of games don't have. For example, if you make a strategy game, you will be able to promote it in certain virtual game events such as Tacticon that are exclusive to such games. These events don't receive as much submissions as general gaming events receive. Same thing applies to YouTubers that exclusively play strategy games. These YouTubers probably don't receive as many coverage requests as general gaming YouTubers do. Same thing 
might even apply to subreddits and other social media communities that these type of games can be exposed to. Another important factor is playtime. There are a lot of genres of games out there that provide infinite playtime. If you make a game like these and price it for $5 to $10, that means that when someone buys it, they will get maximum bang out of their buck. This formula matters a lot to a lot of gamers, which is the opposite when it comes to game journalists. I have heard from journalists that they prefer games that are short and beautiful. Why? Because that's how their job works. The more games they cover, the more eyes they attract towards their website. Short games means that the review and coverage can be produced faster. Beautiful games means that their viewers are more likely to enjoy it. The gamers, however, would prefer a game that prioritizes gameplay, costs almost nothing, and can be played for all eternity. This leads to a situation where you have to choose between a genre that pleases the press and a genre that pleases the gamers or a marriage of both. One more thing about these types of games. They are very popular in certain countries such as China. I have a few friends on Discord from China that have straight up asked me why I don't make this type of games. And the type of games that I make are completely alien to them. So if you are making a game that has that infinite gameplay style, definitely localize it to Chinese and market it for that country. Alright, that's about enough for this video. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe for more game dev and marketing content.